Okay, welcome back everybody to part two. Uh, today I'm going to describe and uh, try to uh, repair this uh, power supply. I believe I've got every, everything together and in one place. But uh, I think as I left you b before, uh, I had talked about uh, uh, the different parts. This is the board that uh, uh, goes, this is the power supply board with the uh, wire wound resistors and the glass resistors. I, I showed that. This is not the one I showed you. This, the one I showed you in the last video was out of the uh, power supply of the 44. But this is the one out of the 38. And you'll see, and I'll describe these in, in detail shortly. These normally don't go there. And uh, the power supply is mounted in the, the metal cabinet uh, on a piece of metal. Uh, this one was pitted quite uh, badly. Uh, I did the treatment on it and uh, with uh, navel jelly, the usual stuff, and painted it. Uh, I'll go over a little bit about the paint as we get further into it. Um, but uh, anyway, this is the mounting bracket that goes on top. As you can see, the tar is melded. That was from the transformer that, that went south on me. So uh, it, it was also pitted, and I ended up having to, to um, prime that. And I didn't like that because uh, several of the grounding uh, connections are on this bracket. So I wanted to make sure. So this one came off of a 37, and it's in pretty good shape. It just needs a little cleaning up, uh, and so I'll, I'll do that off camera also. Uh, I described the, in the last one about the chokes and here's the ugly speaker choke. Uh, done measurements on these, these look good. Now I uh, talked a little bit about the transformer also. Uh, this is the newly wound transformer. I got it uh, uh, Transformer Rewinding Service uh, run by Gary Brown up in Orono, Maine did this for me. Uh, professional job. And he uh, when he sends it back of course it's got the schematic of all the way it was laid out originally and then a final test sheet of the voltages, the uh, wiring diagram and what have you. Now he asked me, I had options on this transformer. Uh, so I chose to go ahead and get the primary wound for modern voltages, uh, 120 to 123 volts. He did that for me. He also asked me, did I want to go back with uh, the old original color code on the wires? I chose to use the modern standard. Now, the purest of the restoration and things like that would probably not like that. <laughs> but in the future, I'm hoping this is going to last another 90 years. And so hopefully those standards will still be there. But uh, I'm going to, he painted this up. So I'm going to scuff this up with sandpaper. And I'm going to use what I've used on the all the Atwater, this Atwater. And this is the... Krylon camouflage paint the brown component. Okay, uh, believe it or not, this is the green component of the Krylon camouflage. Now this had a little bit of um, of um, clear coat put on it to make give it a little gloss, but uh, other than that, it didn't change the color at all. And it's close. Now I've read several articles and pieces on the colors of the Atwater can. They came in several different colors, uh, black, brown. One had a, a real wild design. I don't know what they call it, but it's a mixture of brown and black and white and uh, it's fancy looking. But 
I, I struggled with the, I, I had formulas, people gave me formulas on how to mix the paint and what have you, and I just chose a paint, that paint that was close to it because, and I mean no disrespect whatsoever to anybody on this, but the people that saw these things knew are no longer with us and so they couldn't say you know that's the wrong color but it's close and after 90 years of fading and abuse and what have you um, it uh, you know it, it it's hard to match it's really hard to match another thing interesting thing that uh, I came up with uh, one of my viewers commented and a lot of these Atwaters, I didn't realize this, but a lot of these Atwaters that made in the 20s and 30s went away during World War II because of the metal, the metal drive. So a lot of those went away because they were doing metal at that point in time. Okay, we'll have the transformer. And these are mounted on, these, on this plate. And, of course, this is where the capacitors and um, the chokes go in. Now, I was able to put all of them into one container okay and so this end of it here I will go ahead and I will put my one ounce fuse back in it now if you talk to anybody about Atwater Kent go to the antique radio forums and everything like that and ask ask about an Atwater Kent and they will refer you to this article and I'll put it up on the screen and I'll put it in the description also uh, and it's written by Ken Owens which he is no longer with us but this is if you ask anybody about the Atwater Kent and uh, redoing one or anything like that they will refer you to this article uh, Norm Leal uh, also uh, is a good source but they describe in this article he describes the power supply and the building a capacitor uh, board to go in this now Apparently, they, he used a, a, a 40, an Atwater 40 for this because it had three filter capacitors. Anything after a 40 had a had three. And this is the best of my knowledge. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But he gave the values of these three capacitors. Well, the 37 and the 40, and then the 38 only had two. And so what I've decided to do is mount a board back over in here with two capacitors. Now, his third capacitor was here on the front end of the schematic. And then he added two 10 microfarads. Now, that's higher than the original, but in my original re redoing or uh, fixing of this radio I put 20 a uh, 22 in there which I feel like now is was too high these 0.47s go into uh, uh, another part of the circuit they're coupling capacitors so that's instead of putting them on that board I had to, and originally I had put them on this circuit board now these, let's see, this mounts like this, and then the board mounts like this above. So these are well above the uh, the uh, uh, chokes and the uh, capacitor can, and uh, then the terminal strip bolts onto this. So I decided to put them here. You can see them. You can replace them. You don't have to pull anything out of it or anything like that. So I'm going to make a capacitor board similar to Mr. Owens, except I'm only going to use two capacitors. And what I plan on doing is mounting it with a 
either a terminal strip, I haven't decided yet, either a terminal strip across here, but since I've got this board, I believe I'm just going to uh, mount it to the board with, with some wires coming off of it and make all the connections in, in these cans uh, here. So let me do the painting. Uh, you've seen people paint and scuff a <laughs> hundred times, and then I'll build this board, and then we'll start putting it together in the, the, the next uh, section here. Okay, here's the capacitor board mounted inside the uh, uh, can uh, with the homemade bracket. Um, this is the negative sides of the capacitors, wired, uh, hardwired to chassis ground, and I soldered it to the chassis to make sure I got a good ground. Uh, the other two leads go to the capacitors. It really doesn't matter which because they're both 10 microfarads and they go to ground and this will go to various parts of the choke. Uh, I'm going to uh, do, do this on another video. This one's running kind of long. I don't, I'll try to keep them under 20 minutes for sure. Hopefully 15. And so when I come back I'll put the uh, uh, the fuse into the box, connect and mount all the hardware onto the board or onto the plate then we'll go through the wire by wire wiring diagram of the uh, transformer chokes uh, the AD tube socket all the all the thing in the next video I appreciate you guys for watching I appreciate all the input and the comments and I appreciate all the new subscribers I've gotten this week. So, until next time, this is Larry.